Previously, we discussed the pituitary gland and we said that the pituitary gland, also known as the hypothesis, consists of two sections. The frontal section, known as the anterior pituitary section, and the back section, known as the posterior pituitary section. So, previously, we focused on only the anterior pituitary gland and we said that the anterior pituitary gland releases and produces six different types of hormones. So the human growth hormone, ACTH, also known as the adrenocorticotropic hormone, it produces the thyroid stimulating hormone, it produces our prolactin, the follicle stimulating protein, as well as the luteinizing protein. So all these six different proteins are produced in the endocrine cells in the anterior pituitary gland and they're basically controlled by the hormones produced in the the hypothalamus, the region in the brain found in the forebrain. So the hypothalamus basically produces a set of hormones of its own that ultimately are injected into the capillary bat system found within this region, this entire capillary vein artery system is known as our hypothesial portal system. And it basically connects the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland. So the hormones in the hypothalamus are released into the portal system and they control the release of these hormones in the endocrine cells of the anterior pituitary gland. Now let's discuss the functionality and the purpose of the posterior pituitary gland, the section of this gland found in the back. So we have the hypothalamus, we have the posterior, the anterior pituitary gland, and this funnel section that connects these two regions is known as our infidibulum. So basically, instead of having this system of capillary beds that connects the hypothalamus to our posterior pituitary gland, we have a set of neurons, and we'll see why that's important in just a moment. So instead of actually synthesizing any type of hormone inside the posterior pituitary gland, the posterior pituitary gland does not actually produce any hormone of its own. What happens is the two hormones that are used by the posterior pituitary gland, and we'll see what they are in just a moment, are both synthesized in the cell bodies of the neurons found in the hypothalamus. And these neurons, their axons, basically begin in the hypothalamus and they all extend and end up ending in the posterior pituitary gland. So once we synthesize our hormones, they are then secreted and travel through the axon and are basically stored inside the posterior pituitary gland. So even though this posterior pituitary gland does store two hormones, it doesn't actually produce those hormones. They are produced in the hypothalamus. So in the hypothalamus, we have three sections of uh, nu uh, nuclei, neurons. We have the supraoptic nuclei. Supra simply means in front of or above. We have the paraventricular nuclei and the neurosecretory nuclei. So the two types of hormones that are produced in the hypothalamus and which are stored inside the posterior pituitary gland is the antidiuretic hormone ADH, also known as vasopressin, as well as oxytocin. And both of these proteins are small polypeptides and that means they are both synth uh, synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the cell nuclei in the cell bodies of these nuclei in the hypothalamus. So let's discuss how they are actually produced and what their functionality is and when they are released. And let's begin with the antidiuretic hormone, also known as ADH. So the antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin, and we'll see why it's given this name in just a moment, this hormone is produced in the cell bodies, in the 
uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum of the cell bodies of the supraoptic nuclei. And once we produce them, we package them into special secretory vesicles and they travel through the axon all the way to the posterior pituitary gland. And once they arrive in the posterior pituitary gland, we store them in special secretory vesicles known as the herring bodies. And we store them until they are released, until a certain type of stimulation takes place. The question is, what stimulates the release of our ADH of the vasopressin? So the vasopressin, our antidiuretic hormone, is basically stimulated by the following. When we basically have an increase in the osmolarity of our blood, meaning the blood volume decreases, the amount of fluid, the amount of water in the blood decreases at the same time, the amount of solute increases, this is what stimulates the release of ADH from the posterior pituitary gland. So basically it is released into this network of vessels, blood vessels, and they basically leave and exit the vein. So these three endings are the hypothesial vein. So they are released into the blood and they eventually, the ADH eventually ends up in the kidneys and it basically influences the collecting ducts found in our kidneys. It causes our collecting ducts to basically become more permeable to water. So the collecting ducts end up absorbing more water back into our body, back into our blood vessels, and that increases the water volume found inside our blood. It also decreases the blood osmolarity and it basically increases our blood pressure. Now, our ADH also increases blood pressure by constricting our blood vessels, and this is known as vasoconstriction, and that's exactly why ADH is also known as vasopressin, because it presses on those vessels, and that's why we have vasoconstriction. So, once again, ADH is released when blood osmolarity increases that means our solute concentration increases and our volume amount of water decreases in the blood so ADH affects the permeability of the collecting ducts in our kidneys to water it increases the amount of water that is absorbed back into the blood vessels and that means it decreases the amount of water that is released in the urine it increases the concentration of the solute in our our urine that is expelled. Now, this in turn increases the amount of water, the volume of the blood, and that increases the blood pressure. And ADH also increases blood pressure by constricting, by pressing down on those blood vessels, and this is known as vasoconstriction. So this is ADH. Now, what about oxytocin? Well, oxytocin is also produced in the cell bodies of our neurons. They're produced in the cell bodies of the paraventricular nuclei as well as the supraoptic nuclei. And once we produce oxytocin, they travel down the axon in these secretory vesicles. And just like in this case, they are stored in special vesicles on the axon of these neurons known as herring bodies. And when stimulation takes place, these hormones, the oxytocin is released into this bed of capillaries, into the network of capillaries, and eventually exits through our veins known as our uh, hypothesial vein. Now, by the way, this is the superior hypothesial artery. This is the inferior. Superior means on top of, and inferior means on the bottom of. So these two arteries essentially bring the oxygenated blood as well as the nutrients to the hypothalamus portion as well as to this portion, the posterior pituitary portion of our gland.
Now, the question is, when exactly do we release our oxytocin and what effect does the oxytocin hormone have on our body? Well, basically, oxytocin is released during childbirth in the female human. And this basically causes the contraction of smooth muscles in our uterus and that basically helps move our child out of the body. And what the oxytocin also does post childbirth is it basically stimulates the secretion, the ejection of our milk found in the glands in the breast. So basically this is the function of oxytocin while this is the function of the antidiuretic hormone. Both of these hormones are not actually produced in the posterior pituitary gland. They are produced in the cell bodies of the neurons found in the hypothalamus, but once produced, they are released and stored in the herring bodies in the region of our posterior pituitary gland as shown in this region.